Mike Bond here at Bellator 286 Media Day with Juan Archuleta, who's fighting Enrique Barzola Saturday night in Long Beach. Um, man, I talked to you at the beginning of camp, and now you're through here pretty much at the end. I was at the gym. Just how'd it go? I mean, how have the past weeks of the training for this been? It's been super awesome. You know, like I said, I'm, I was blessed to have TJ and Cub Swanson back into the training room, being able to train with those guys. And so it was a great camp. You know, uh, came out injury free and uh, now ready to perform come Saturday night. Yeah, you just love doing media the day, the day before it wins, right? How are you? Right, like your mouth, you're talking so much, you start getting chapped. You're like, oh man, I was swimming, so my eyes are dry from like all the chlorine, and I was like, oh man. But no, it's cool. I like it. It's fun, you know. Um, how are these cuts to 35 now? I mean, I know you fought as high as lightweight, and you've had great success. You know, king of the cage, three division champion, and stuff like that. Um, do you ever, you know, I'm sure maybe on days like this, you think twice about it. But do you feel like this is the right weight class for you? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely challenging. You know, it's uh, but mainly it's the matchups. Like, okay, if the matchups make sense, let's let's make down, let's do the cut down to 35. So it has to make sense in order to come down. Otherwise, it's just spinning my wheels. You know. Why do you feel like this fight made sense and made it worth it for you? Because the tournament's still going on and possibility of getting pulled back in, someone gets hurt, and so just making sure you're always on call and ready to go, you know? Yeah, have they told you that? They're like, hey, you know, you win here, something happens, uh, keep ready? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Enrique and I both were winning our last fights, and so it makes sense to have us fight and just use us as an alternate just in case, you know, someone doesn't make weight or anything else happens. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, like, how often can you make this cut? I mean, could you do it again in a few months if you had to? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm super professional. I've never missed weight. Uh, you know, I just got to know in advance if this is where they need me, and this is where they need me right now. So just staying down, and, you know, luckily I, I get to go out to train with TJ the next couple of weeks get him ready for his fight and cub and things like that so i'll still be in the gym no matter what yeah, how's tj looking so far i know he's just a couple weeks out yeah he's a couple weeks out cubs a couple weeks out so we're all just uh fine-tuning and getting ready you know it's it was definitely very challenging because <laughs> we're all fighting for a position in there and like getting ready for our fights so every position you're in the, in there with them we're, we're fighting to the bitter end so it was, it was a fun camp definitely yeah, no, how would you define tj's skills right now i mean obviously we know he's good he's been around for a long time he just only had you know the one fight in like three years and it was obviously tooth and nail with sandhag and um have you seen a lot of growth in his game over you know the past years he's been out and then obviously it's been a while since the last fight too yeah i mean he look at where he's gotten me being a training partner you know uh world championship level fighting some of the best guys in the world and staying active with me you know and uh keeping up with me and training he trains in day in and day out with me no matter what you know like uh so right now he's looking awesome he's looking phenomenal and I think he finishes Sterling in like pretty early rounds. You know, I don't even think it's going to be close. Will he be in your corner on Saturday? Uh, no, I didn't want to put that type of pressure on him either. Him and Cub, right? Like this is a first fight, but uh, that I, I will have without him. But I've, I've been very fortunate to have Paul Herrera, Tiki Gosa, and Felipe Del Monica in my corner this whole camp and uh, getting me ready to fine tune me for Barzola. What's uh, your you know kind of perfect world for this fight? I know all you guys would like to go in there, throw one punch, and be done with it, knock him out. But like for you, coming off the last fight, um, I know Enrique's done some media this week saying you know it's kill or be killed. Like I want a war, things like that. Do you want that, or do you want this to be like a clean, one-sided performance to kind of show how strong you've rebounded from the last one? Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much always my game plan is to go and show how much I can outclass all these guys. Like my last fight, just outclassing them. And unfortunately, I got I got caught and. And uh, this time, making sure there's no error, uh, no room for error on this fight. Just controlling, dominating, and finishing them in spectacular performance. That way, I'm forced to have going to the next fight, knowing who I'm going to go and make my call on who I'm getting. Do you feel like that's kind of like almost a mental win before you get in there when he's talking like, this is how I want the fight, I'm ready for this. I mean, I know you guys are ready for anything, but just the kind of the difference in approach, you want dominance, he's ready for, you know, or wants like a war type of thing. Yeah, and uh, that just goes to speak to my fighting style. Like, uh, people don't know, like, when they have to sign the contract to fight me, they know that they're in for a war. And so that goes to speak on my volume, on who I am as a martial artist, right? Like, every fighter that I fight, they know they're going to be in for a war no matter what. Like, everyone that you've, that the media has talked to going into my fight is always like, oh, this is going to be one of the hardest fights I have. Like, I have to make sure my cardio is on point. I have to make sure my technique's on point. But that's because who I am and what I bring to the table every time I step into that cage and the presence that I bring. I'm one of the best 
best martial artists in the world, right? So with these people, they have to be, you know, ready to go. Otherwise, they're going to get fucked up. So. And last thing, what do you expect the environment to be like come Saturday night? Are you going to have like an abnormal amount of, you know, supporters, friends, family in the crowd? Or uh, do you need to block all that stuff out so you can just focus on the performance? Yeah, for me, you know, there, uh, I, I travel with a big fam. I mean, I'm one of seven, right? And so, and then like I have like over like 500 family members. So, you know, just being in that, that kind of element, I've, uh, they've always traveled and watched me compete. So I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to hearing the crowd and hearing the roars and the oohs and the ahs and maybe even the boos, we'll see. But, uh, you know, because when, when I'm controlling people and dominating, sometimes some people like to see more stand-up wars, but we'll see what happens. You know, it's, it's his job to get up and it's my job to stay on top and beat someone up. One, one and seven, right? where do you fit in that chain in terms of age? Um, I'm the third youngest. Third youngest. Yeah, a lot of brothers, sisters coming. Uh, four older brothers, one younger brother, one younger sister. Okay, so you've been fighting Six since boys. forever. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> been getting beat up my whole life. So losing a fight doesn't mean anything to me. It's like whatever, dude. <laughs> All right, appreciate the time, Juan. It's great talking to you. Be well.